Today, the B.C. government released their investigation into the ethnic outreach scandal that saw political staffers resign after a leaked email showed they planned government quick win apologies for past wrongs to ethnic groups as a way of winning voter support. Jill Bennett has the story. Anthony, this is the much anticipated investigation, the results of that investigation by Deputy John Dybul. Some were saying they were afraid that he might not be objective because he's too close to the government, but this report certainly does find a lot of fault. Now, the report itself is about 103 pages long. Just to give you some of the highlights, now, the findings of the report, it finds that officials in the B.C. Liberal government did not draw a boundary between partisan and government roles. It also found that there was inappropriate activity that uh, around the procurement of community liaison contractors. It also finds two serious instances of government resources being misused. Now, there are several recommendations in this report. Just to give you an idea, here are three of the recommendations to consider the involvement and culpability of political staff involved and to take appropriate disciplinary and corrective action. It also says improve the standards of conduct for political staff and direct the Comptroller General to determine if any recovery of expenditure or payment is necessary. So just some of the recommendations. We did get a better idea from this report as well, exactly where Kim Hackstead fit, fit into this. Now, she was the Deputy Chief of Staff. She resigned shortly after this document was made public. Uh, it looked as though she was really overseeing a lot of this. Uh, there was also a finding that government staff, again, were using private email when they shouldn't have because they were doing work for the party. And keep in mind, we saw the minister responsible for multiculturalism resign. We got a better idea as to why that happened. John Yap was faulted in this report for overseeing improper efforts to help liaison officers with outreach contracts. Now, Christy Clark did speak to reporters shortly after this report was tabled. She said she will take all of the recommendations. She will implement those recommendations. She also said that John Yap, that cabinet minister that resigned his post over this, won't be returning to cabinet anytime soon. We are expecting much more reaction to this report from John Dybul. Back to you. All right, some breaking horse race numbers for you. A new poll is out suggesting things continue to look bad for the B.C. Liberals. Sun News pollster David Coletto gives us the rundown. David? Thanks, Anthony. Yes, a new poll is out today from Ipsos Reid out of British Columbia that suggests the new Democrats in B.C. Uh, are actually, their lead is actually growing, not shrinking. Um, the, the poll that was completed this week found that the B.C. NDP is at 51% among uh, decided voters in British Columbia with the BC Liberals and Christy Clark well back 19 points back at 32 percent. Now these numbers compared to the last time that Ipsos uh, Reid was in the field are, are a slight increase for the New Democrats three points and a slight decrease for uh, for the end sorry for the Liberals. Now the the BC Conservatives the BC Greens the other two parties in this thing really aren't playing much factor nine percent for the Conservatives and seven for the Green Party. Now when we look at the leaders, it's all about the leaders of the last few, Christy Clark and the BC Liberals in controversy around um, their attempts to target ethnic voters. We see here when you ask who would be the best Premier of British Columbia, Adrian Dix, still by far uh, the most selected. He's at 37 percent compared to 23 percent for Christy Clark. Lastly, favorability. So it's one thing to think um, you should be the best premier. It's another to think whether people have a positive impression of you. And here these numbers mimic the numbers we see in the ballot. 51% of British Columbians have a favorable impression of Adrian Dix. He's the only leader. And look at numbers for Christy Clark, well back, only 30%. Still a lot of work for Christy Clark to catch up in British Columbia. Thank you, David. That's David Coletto at Abacus Data. For her take on the big numbers and, of course, the latest on Ethnicgate, BC commentator Elise Mills joins us live from Vancouver. All right, Elise, engaged in serious misconduct. That's what John Dybul's report said of at least two members yeah. of Christy Clark's government. What's your take on this? Yeah, I, it's absolutely embarrassing for this premier and her circle around her leadership. To be honest with you, when I was over with the BC Liberals, uh, you know, 
uh, as recently up to about two, three years ago. I never, ever saw this type of behavior. Uh, the, the ship that was run over there was very tight, not loosey-goosey, and definitely an understanding that staff had a domino effect on its leadership. Obviously, this new staff uh, I, I just completely broke the rules and misunderstood what a good code of conduct is. So this is quite embarrassing. I feel bad for caucus members and cabinet members who are probably going to be uh, slightly tainted with some of this stuff. But all around, the firings need to happen. This is I don't think there's anyone that can defend what this report produced today, Anthony. Elise, we do have a quote from the report, an email from an aide, Mike Lee, to Multicultural Minister John Yap. He says in it, it is absolutely critical that we do not leave any evidence of us helping them through this application. So essentially what he's saying is we know we shouldn't be doing what we're doing. Is that about it? I, absolutely. It's a culture of entitlement that I can't even begin to wrap my head around. It's not part of my experience working for the BC Liberals uh, or working in politics at all. Actually, I was speaking to other commentators today uh, who share a similar background to mine and were absolutely stunned and appalled by this behavior. This is sort of reminiscent of the, B the federal Liberals sponsorship scandal and the emails that went back and forth around that, that sense of entitlement that they're above the law. And uh, I think it's important though that our viewers and the public and the voting public understand this is a very small group of people this definitely does not malign the majority of cabinet and caucus so i think we need to be careful about that but this is sure going to hurt the bc liberals anthony but at least on that point i think a lot of people are cynical about uh, reports commissions inquiries because unless there are criminal charges in the end these things do keep occurring in provincial politics and federal politics as you know what would you say to the cynics out there well, well, I have to say, I mean, this is not, even though I might have drawn some comparables in the communication style between sponsorship, uh, the sponsorship scandal that happened in Ottawa uh, with the federal liberals compared to this type of behavior, this is sort of a part of that sense of entitlement. But one was criminal and one is a breach of the code of conduct. And I think we have to be very, very careful about how we separate that out. But I think immediately the premier needs to go in there and fire uh, those who were involved. I think she has to establish that she really didn't know anything about this. Um, I'm I, I, I sort of having a hard time believing that myself, but you know, um, and I think she needs to make sure that she gets rid of um, the people that were uh, involved in this scandal very quickly in order to help the rest of her caucus, the cabinet, the so-called innocent victims of this really terrible plan, and so that they can get out there and get campaigning. You know, that's what leaders do. One more question on that note of campaigning, this new Ipsos Reid poll, NDP 51% in BC. Stephen yeah. Harper got just around 40% and, and he had a majority. Are, are you surprised by these high numbers? No, absolutely not. This is the type of number that Adrian Dix should be expecting when he's had such an easy ride out here. Plus, I mean, look at where the government is uh, for the last couple of weeks in regards to so-called ethnic gate, if you want to call it that. I think there's been one uh, misstep after another, so most of them very small, but it's sort of a you know death by a thousand cuts. Plus, I don't think anyone in the B.C. Liberal circle really assumed they were going to go for a fourth term and win a fourth term, um, Anthony. So I think we have to take a look at where we're at politically, take out the scandals, the problems, all of that. He should be uh, resting kind of high in the polls on a on um, uh, you know favorability with the public. He's a fresh face technically in their minds. They don't know anything about him. He hasn't said very much, nor has he had to, because the premier has been doing a whole lot of that for him. So I'm not surprised by those numbers, but it's got to be absolutely uh, you know a sense of defeat for the BC Liberals to see that today on top of what this inquiry produced. All right, Elise, thanks for joining us as always. Thanks, Anthony.